What's happening everyone? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Today we're going to take a look at custom binding, talk about some lessons I've learned, some, I guess, suggestions, differences between different sizes of books, different types of paper used within a book, even different binding types, look at gutter loss, how the book reads, how the pages sort of turn, how easily it stays open, a lot of factors to consider, price in there as well. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that in general structure of a bind in terms of a reading experience and of course how to cater all that to yourself. Very excited for this. There's a lot of variables with custom binding and I've done it quite a bit. So hopefully over the, the, the hundred books that I've done, I'll, I'll have learned enough things to pass on. <laughs> I took a bunch of books in my collection, different sizes, different types of paper, uh, different publishers, different styles of artwork even, and we'll take a look at some of the differences because there really are a lot of factors involved. Um, I'll, I'll let you know what I think of a lot of these factors and why I don't particularly care too much about all of them, but um, things to consider when you're binding. You know, the first being, of course, size. Size matters with the bind. I've got two here. One's about half the size of the other, um, one inch versus around two inches. Um, there's a huge difference when it comes to, to the reading experience of books like these. They're both kind of the same type of paper. You know, a bind, a bigger bind looks really cool. Trust me, I have a ton of them. Uh, but a smaller bind like this, you'll notice the, the book opens really nicely and because there isn't a huge book block, your spine is getting a little less stress and strain on it. You can see with the bigger books, it's a way bigger stretch. There's more going on with the actual support of the spine. So something to consider when you're reading. Honestly, it'll affect your reading experience as well. Sometimes you want that bigger uh, that bigger gap uh, in, in your spine to get a better reading experience. Sometimes the smaller books give you a big enough gap to enjoy that. Generally, bigger books can also just cause trouble with gutter loss in general. So looking at some modern comics, this is a Green Lantern bind that collects season one, as they called it. So I think it's around 15 issues. Kind of my favorite kind of size uh, to, to use. Uh, to read in particular. This is single issues, um, so there will be ads in it, but honestly, minimal gutter loss. You'll obviously still have a little just because binding does involve you know, binding the pages together. So you're going to lose a little bit at the end of the day. And with modern comics, you've got a lot of art sinking into the gutter. Uh, so it's probably more beneficial to you and your reading experience if you want to get as much artwork as possible to have a smaller bind in this sort of case. Uh, to, to It lays open a lot quicker. Uh, you don't lose as much in the gutter. The double page spreads in particular is where you get the most saving grace. H heaven forbid there's text in the middle of a two-page spread. Uh, a smaller bind is your best bet. This is a gargantuan X-Men uh, custom bind that I, I made, sort of collecting everything uh, by Jonathan Hickman um, up until X of Swords. It's a huge book. I love reading it. It's such a fantastic monstrosity to read, but you do get a bit of gutter loss. It is a bit more heftier to deal with when you're reading, uh, be that, you know, trying to not sit and read, trying to stand and read, or just reading in general. Uh, sometimes you'll need to push the pages down a bit more, uh, get into the gutter a little bit with, with a modern comic like this. So it's still really good. It's still not that bad. But all things considered, I definitely prefer having the smaller bind with newer comics, particularly because the paper is also a, a bit, uh, you know, it's it's a bit, it, the quality differs so vastly. Um, but anyway, we'll talk, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. If we're looking at more classic older comics that are strictly, I guess, newsprint, as they would call it, newsprint stock, I don't know if there's necessarily a difference uh, between the size of book that you do. Uh, I've got two Incredible Hulk binds. One is they're they're both fairly large. One is bigger than the other, and really because of the way older comics were structured, the art based on the artwork, you've they they have a built-in almost gutter loss uh, window that that can be you know taken advantage of. I think this bind is Smithsonian. So there is a bit more gut, a gutter loss as a result of that uh, binding quality, but it is stronger um, and, and definitely recommended for books uh, older, like older books like this, uh, made of older comics. 
So there there is a bit of a a bit of gutter loss, but it's not that bad just because of the way the artwork is. So that's that's really the big factor to consider, right? With older comics, you've got an art style that maybe doesn't bleed into the gutter as much, and you don't need to worry about that gutter loss. But sometimes you'll get something like Future Imperfect, where you know you're you're missing chunks of of Hulk's arm. You're missing. It looks like those two panels at the top are right next to each other, but there's there's a gap between them. Uh, so things like that. If you go smaller with with some of these, you you might save yourself a bit more on two page spreads. Uh, it's it's a tough game to play. At the end of the day, you're gonna lose a little bit no matter what. And you've also got to consider your budget. If you can fit more into one bind, you can potentially save yourself the cost of doing two binds as opposed to one, which is always a huge thing to consider. Um, there are some crazy things you can do, like cardstock covers. I, I mean, if you're looking for a great reading experience, I don't recommend it. I just love the covers. I love the sort of uniqueness of this bind and and my and the metal bind uh, with with these cardstock covers. They just pop up. You kind of know when the next chapter is coming, at least. Uh, but it, it's constantly popping up and never fully lays flat. But again, could have split this into two, maybe it would have been better. I just wanted to have this one gargantuan bind. So much to think about, so much to think about, right? In terms of pricing, you know, you're, you're paying for every single bind, right? So if you can squeeze, if you'd rather have a two inch versus one, uh, two one inch binds, that's totally fine. It's, t it's tough to make that decision. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Um, sometimes, you know, if you've got multiple 12 issue stories i'll even combine them into one bind and, and make an anthology out of it because there are differences you can see how much you know you can kind of see just by looking at at the spine how much more you know stress there is and how how much more spread out every all the all the everything is with bigger books they're still really cool i love the novelty of them and i'll probably never stop doing them um they're a great way to like i said optimize your your finances if if that's a, a concern at times um and then i i can't help myself and get smaller books that just have this incredible incredible uh reading experience um because there are so many things you can do whether you're you know sitting down reading whether you're using a book stand um there's i personally whenever i like to read i like to get up a little bit walk around go for a bit of a stroll um, but that's just me. Um, I'll obviously like to sit down as well. And at that point, if I'm sitting down, I'll take out a bigger book. You're not going to walk around with a giant X-Men uh, custom bind, but easily do that with the Green Lantern seasons or some of the um, young animal binds I have that are around, you know, that one inch, one and a half inch mark. Um, that'll let you sort of walk around with it. Another thing to consider with size is you'll have to pay more at certain places. Most places above two inches will start to charge more uh, because it is more work and it's, you know, they'll also try to talk you out of it because it, it isn't it isn't highly recommended at all. Uh, I've been doing binding for I don't know how many years at this point. I've got, I think I said 100 at the start of this video. It's, a bit, it's, it's around that number. Honestly, at this point, I've lost count. I've sold a bunch. I've, I've got a bunch that I'm waiting on right now. They're just, it, it, it's, it's such an amazing, amazing time. Uh, I always look at my shelf and I love all my official releases. They look fantastic, but nothing gets me more than looking at this shelf and these custom binds. Uh, they're amazing. Uh, I'm so glad I've experimented with them. I'm so glad I've I've stuck to certain formulas in terms of sizing. Uh, my personal recommendation is around one and a half, one point two five, one and a half inches. Um, again, depending on the paper, with lighter paper, definitely go bigger if you want. Um, I personally, my biggest thing with reading now is moving around a little bit as I read, at least standing as I read. Um, so having something lighter that I can move around with in my hand is definitely a preference for me. What are some tips you have for custom binders out there? There are a ton more, I'm sure. Let us know down in the comment section below. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any more questions, hit us up in the comments. Thank you all very much for tuning in. This was Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Until next time, you stay classy, Internet.